Let me hit you with a not so hot take. Xbox have been literally useless for years. From the ground up, the leadership incompetent morons. When has Phil Spencer ever been held accountable despite making seamlessly only bad decisions? He has been useless. The studios themselves, when did they last release a good game? They've all basically been putrid. You look at last year, Starfield, Redfall for God's sake, and all of these other games that we've forgotten from them because they're so unmemorable. Now, one of the reasons I thought in the past that Xbox were failing so hard is they claim that they were hands-off with their studios, even when they could have, say, delayed a game, like Redfall, like maybe Starfield, just scrapped it and got Bethesda to move on to the Elder Scrolls 6. They didn't do that. They allowed these studios to do their own thing. Or at least that is what they told us. But it seems like Xbox have been spinning tall tales, because some evidence has come out to suggest that Xbox actually are quite hands-on with their studios, but instead of doing it in areas where it could be useful, like quality control or using their experienced engineers to, to maybe fix some of these games, they're not doing that. Instead, they're forcing DEI into all of their studios' catalogs of titles, and they've even forced some of these studios to hire and work with Sweet Baby Inc., so I'm sure some of these studios want to be doing these things, like injecting politics and DEI and so on, but it's an Xbox mandate that you have to work with Sweet Baby. You have to do these things. So I do have to say, I used to be pretty neutral on Xbox. I thought, yeah, at least they're releasing their games for PC. Maybe one day they'll make something good. Now, I do not think so. There's a clear reason for why their games are horrible and it seems like they're destroying their own games on purpose because they've made it all about politics first. They don't even care about the quality. We can see what's going on. And a lot of this comes from Mark Kern here on Twitter. So what he says here, Microsoft Xbox mandates changes at studios, forces them to hire Sweet Baby Inc and erase white characters within the games. He spoke to some ex-devs at two different Microsoft studios who say DEI is ruining and altering games and studio culture. Now, again, I have a feeling that most of these studios, they're totally on board with it. The sorts of people that they hire, the culture is just totally rotten. And the people there believe in doing these things. Focusing on ESG first. No, we're not here to make a, a good game. What are you talking about? Gameplay systems, the world. No, 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 that's a distant second to our first priority, which is spreading a message, injecting a, a worldview. That's always number one on the tier list. And anything to do with the actual video game, that is a distant second, distant third. And he mentions that changes happened after Xbox meddling. Now, some of these studios that he refers to, one of them is Compulsion Games, and they're responsible for titles like We Happy Few, which some people got excited about because it looked like Bioshock in the marketing. It came out, it was nothing like an immersive sim, a Bioshock game, so people quickly forgot about it. But Compulsion Games have recently hired someone new. Her name's Katie. And she announces that she's happy and proud to announce that she's joined the amazing team at Compulsion as their new community manager. And she apparently likes to speak her mind. Now, I mentioned that these studios, their cultures are rotten. And this is proven by the people that they hire. So this Katie person, something she likes to say in her spare time is Asian and white, aka white adjacent. Now, this might be a little bit controversial, but this sort of opinion... I see it as being now Asian people, they are technically what we call a minority in, in their little land, these words that they like to say, but they never seem to talk about Asian people much because it's hard for them to find examples of where Asians have had challenges or they failed at something. So because there's a lot of successful Asian people, they're sort of like, no, no, they're, they're basically white people because they're having success. They can't count because they ruin our narrative of being victims. And here it is. Honestly, I hate gamers. This was posted at 3.30 in the morning. So she's sitting there up in bed, red faced like a tomato, thinking about gamers and how they've ruined everything. Oh my goodness. And this is just one of Xbox recent hires. This person 
literally works at the Xbox head office. It's not even one of their studios. I believe she's the global product marketing manager of Xbox, it says here. So a fairly senior role, totally hired on merit, I'm sure. And she says, raise your hand if you're not a white man and you buy video games. No hate to white dudes, though. It's just another day in the gaming industry that minorities have to fight to prove they exist. Now, if I'm reading this correctly, she's trying to claim that as a white woman, she's a minority. She's got it very hard. I'm pretty sure the statistics say that in the United States, there are more white women than white men. There are literally more of you than anyone else. And you're trying to, oh, poor me, oh, we, we can't do anything. Apparently, white men, they're, they're, they're trotting all over us. Well, I've got to say, you look about 35 years old in your profile photo. You've got a senior role at Xbox, and let's be totally real. All the DEI crap that Xbox are pushing on their studios, it's probably all the same at head office as well. You've probably been hired as a token person to make it all look good on the ESG scores. You're not a victim. Nice try. And what does this tweet even mean anyway? Raise your hand if you're not a white man and you buy video games. Are you suggesting that if someone of colour walks into a store and tries to buy a game, they're going to have a hard time? They're not going to be served? If you're there to spend money, I think they're going to be happy to see you. And of course, this person got ridiculed and they protected their tweets. So as usual, the second that they're challenged, they go into hiding, they disappear, and I'm sure this person will face zero consequences. Whereas if it was a dude who made a controversial post about a non-white race, they'd be fired, they'd never work again. So the old double standard. Now, Mark Kern, who originally spoke about this, how Microsoft are mandating these DEI-related changes, sweet baby and everything else at studios, he went into a bit more detail. I couldn't find the rest of the tweets, but someone has archived them. I'm not sure if they were deleted or I just can't find them, but there were certainly some points of interest. So, for instance, the alleged changes after Microsoft got involved, they included hiring of a DEI director, hiring of a consulting firm to gender balance and review hiring promotion policies. Now, of course, these consulting firms, they're always a croc. Essentially, they come in, and what do they mean by gender balance? If they came in and, and say there was... 30% male, 70% females. Do you think they'd see an imbalance there and go, oh, you need to hire more men. What's going on here? No, no, no. They'd see that as a totally great thing, proving that the sort of work they're doing is, is working and it's great. They're fine with inequality as long as it's the right side of that. It'd be the same if there were 10% white people and 90% people of color or whatever. If that was going on, fantastic stuff. This is an incredible, diverse studio. They've gotten rid of all the white people. It doesn't matter if the people People in the roles currently, they're unqualified to be doing what they're doing. We need to hire based on equity. Competency should never come into it. And of course, the big one, hiring of Sweet Baby Inc. to work on the published games. So it's not that Microsoft were hands off, letting studios do their thing. They've been forcing their individual studios that they own, that they told us the general public they were hands off with, they forgot to mention that, oh, hang on, actually, we've been forcing them to work with Sweet Baby Inc. Now, one of these studios in question, Compulsion Games, again, that was the We Happy Few studio, they're making a new title called South of Midnight. And if we look at this, we don't need the Sweet Baby Detected Curator to just take one look at and know what's going on here. You can pretty much guess that the art department had one directive, which was no white people. You can't have any white people. And that's across the game, not even just this main character that we see here. The writing is on the wall with this one. But apparently what happened is after Sweet Baby Inc. was forced onto Compulsion Games by Microsoft, this title, South of Midnight, the main character was race swapped from white to black. So we look here once again, this was originally a white character, Microsoft comes in, they say to the studio, no, 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 what's going on here, you'll need to work with Sweet Baby Inc, thank you very much, and then they race swapped the character. Remember when Sweet Baby Inc tried to downplay everything and they sort of went, oh, no, 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 we might just touch up a script, maybe we'll add, say, an audio log to the game, it's sometimes hard for these studios to do all this writing. 
Who's believing that now? They're race swapping main characters in video games, changing the entire direction of the title. And we've even got a screenshot. The main character of Hazel was swapped shortly after Sweet Baby got involved, changed from white to black. And we can see here the character model. You would assume that this is a white woman. We look at South of Midnight now and it's totally different. And if you watch the trailer for that game, it seems like absolutely everything has been changed and white people have been erased from existence. So it's more evidence of what we kind of knew, but Sweet Baby Inc. and anyone defending them was lying about. They try and say all of these different consultancies, whether it is Sweet Baby, whether it's Black Girl Gamers, that's the latest one people are talking about, many, many others. They pretend that they just sort of drop in, change a couple of things here and there, maybe have a meeting or two and then they're on their way. They are fundamentally changing the direction of games and these huge conglomerate corporations, the Microsoft, the Sonys, they're not just allowing it to happen, they seem to be encouraging it. Claim to be hands off, they lied about that. They are forcing these studios to work with the sweet babies of the world. And we can see firsthand that they're ruining a lot of these games because the priority just shifts. It's no longer about building the best game possible. Interesting stories, gameplay first. No, it's DEI first. And the big issue is what happens is it might be that once Microsoft start doing this, some people in the studio like it, some people don't, they leave. They then have to recruit more people, and who do they recruit? People like this insane idiot who was going on about hating gamers, and an Asian, white, they're no different, blah, 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 blah. And then that's the rot of the studio. The culture's destroyed. This studio will never make a good game again. That's what's happening. And thank God people are waking up to it. I've got no plans to buy any Xbox games anytime soon. Not that I did anyway. The last one I bought was Starfield and I didn't have a lot of fun with it. So good riddance to Xbox, Phil Spencer. Anyone who is in that leadership team should be thrown out. They really need to start again because everything to do with them is rotten. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.